squads, squads, squad. Welcome to Esports in 30 Overwatch Edition. This is the show where we take you even deeper into your favorite esports games. Today, we've got so much action from the Overwatch League to get to. I am AJ Fry, joining me on my journey on the couch. We got the coach of UC Irvine Overwatch, Ronald Renanthera Lee. Renanthera, AJ. Renanthera. Come on, week two. There's so many syllables a, in your it's name. It's in the dictionary. It's a real word. You can I look it up. I just came under my real name. Uh, it's like three syllables. Amateur. AJ Fry. Amateur. I apologize. Come on. Reactions to uh, the week so far and where we're sitting heading into the playoffs? Uh, interesting. You know, next week is probably going to be a little bit more consequential. Um, I think week five was a little disappointing, but at least now we have our eight teams going into playoffs and mm -hmm. we can watch that and be excited for that. Well, I, for one, am very hyped and we will get you up to my excitement level with some of these awesome highlights from yeah. the week. Them. He can just go ahead and get yep, plant the grab in the wall. Here's the combo coming up. Self destruct thrown in. And a triple! Michelle once again coming up with the goods. And this is Soul Dynasty now. They will have the lock. Soul has now won the sets, sending London Spitfire home. He's trying to block out this knot. He's just pushing forward. Oh man, right out in front, locking him up. And it is a, uh, it's a slaughter. Lock up RCK on the card, they pop him out of the back and melt him down. Unko now gonna be popping that transcendence, just desperately trying to keep the rest of the squad alive as they wait for OG to rejoin, but I don't think they're gonna be able to do it. Closer's gonna be eliminated. Unko under fire, 100 energy color hex is coming for you. Takes him down, and ladies and gentlemen, we are going to game five. Trying desperately to buy some time, Zach from the rally, just trying to armor himself up, but he himself will be they taken down. The fire strike coming through, plus an uprising. First sweep, going the distance. The Dallas Fuel, just nothing that they can do. OG trying to make it back in. They get attacked from RCK on the back of the point of the Tracer. But he just has a sliver of HP, and he will be finished off. The Boston Uprising have done it in the end. Hustle around the back, the shot calling from Fusion. Absolutely brilliant shot calling again. Back to the squad, it's time to sweat now. Spree wants to push forward, Rockets gets a very timely transcendent from Spree, pushes up. Dante over that high ground, gonna be a rally. Down there now being used by the rain, it was a nerf shower attack. Oh, the connects, that is huge! Oh, oh no! The rain! Well, they feel the earth move under their feet. If they follow up on that one, the rain, that would be huge. EMP now thrown into the mix and immediately Rockets has to go for the transcendent. Pokepo is knocked down, he's still being healed though, he's stayed alive! The right half of the ladder rain stands and he gets three with one swing! Well, that's one way to send a message. And the Atlanta Ray will take the series, solidify this fight in the playoffs. Oh, it came down to the wire on so many of those great games. And now we know all eight of our playoff teams. And uh, for a shorter week of action, it was certainly action-packed with so much on the line. Uh, now to help Ron and I chat about all the week five action and the playoff picture, it's Coach of Palooza up in here as we welcome the coach of Blank Esports, Alex Zord Simkovich, to the show. How's it going, Alex? It's going great, AJ. How about you guys? Doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. long time no see, Sword. Yeah, no, Ron, great to see you on the couch now. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been like what? Like almost, uh, when's the last time we spoke? Like working with Team Canada? Probably Team Canada, yeah. Probably at the time party, actually. Yeah, time flies. All right, guys, yeah. stop showing off on your credentials here, <laughs> making me feel like a pleb down in Platinum League. Uh, we got to talk about some of these games. Of course, uh, the first one, it was ultimately less exciting than we were all hoping for. Seoul going up against London. Uh, Seoul ultimately defeating London 3 0. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I thoughts on this game was one draw. What? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did draw. time on uh, Temple. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, everyone draws on Temple. It's a tough map to mm -hmm. push to that second point on for sure. Indeed. Uh, Alex, any reactions to Seoul versus London? Honestly, that's just like a huge win for not just uh, Seoul or not just the Seoul organization, but also uh, Ryu himself, right? If you think about it, back in the day. Uh, Lunatic High struggled against uh, Juicy Busan actually towards the finals, um, way back in Apex. And even then, Seoul had this big rivalry with London Spitfire where they were unable to take a game actually against the Spitfire last season. So it's kind of a win. I saw a nice little Reddit meme where it's uh, all the old players from Seoul. You have Ryu finally won a game against his opponents so on London Spitfire, and the meme is Ryu is the only one left from Lunatic High. So at what cost did Soul have to sacrifice to win against London Spitfire finally? At what cost? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, Boston uprising with the huge reverse sweep ag uh, up against Dallas Fuel yeah. as well. Uh, thoughts on that one? I mean, it's always fun to watch that happen. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess not if you're um, Dallas Fuel. Yeah, not if you're Jane <laughs> on the Dallas Fuel right now. <laughs> some Canadians Poor here are feeling a little better this week. You know, some Canadians not. Um, one Canadian that I'm sure does feel really happy about that would probably be, be Note on Boston. Uh, you know, had a good stand-up performance, always really consistent player. Uh, we, you know, we worked with him, uh, Sword, you know. Yeah. Um, I think you and me both agree that he had uh, a fantastic series against Dallas Peel, even whipping out Tracer on Vols to clutch them out a little safely when it was getting hairy. Yeah. Um, you know, it, when you're reverse sweeping, there's very little room for error. So uh, I was very, very impressed with him uh, personally, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm sure you are too. Yeah, no, uh, honestly, like, no, it kind of shows, like you're saying, no, is that kind of really consistent player that just continuously plays at a, a level that is such a high level. Uh, and he, he's flexible too, right? A lot of people know him for just D.Va, but realistically speaking, uh, if I'm not mistaken, way back in the day, he used to play DPS too. Yeah, so really he does have that flexible hero pool. But the big thing that I would say that's the big uh, victor or the big kind of leadership role within Boston would be actually Fusions. Fusion is such a great emotional leader. Uh, and you saw it kind of in the, uh, in the middle. I think at halftime, you saw that Fusion, they showed a clip where Fusion said, okay guys, like, keep cool, like, you know, leading his team emotionally and showing, like, he's able to kind of lead. And we saw that at actually World Cup, uh, when Fusion plays against, or not Fusion, sorry, the UK played against uh, USA and Seoul, or South Korea, right? They, he was a huge monumental part of that team in order to make them win. And I think he's a great team for Boston, or a great piece for Boston as well. Yeah, Giga Chad Fusions over here, really making a name for himself as uh, the rookie of the season. Uh, yeah, sure. Before we talk about uh, Atlanta versus Houston, just talking about Note making that switch to, mm -hmm. uh, to Tracer, I noticed, at least in this final week, it seemed like more teams were willing to switch off of Ghost. Yeah, going more to DPS. You know, I think, I think Chengdu has uh, slowly started to work their magic into the rest of the teams. Massage you know? the rest of the league. Hey, guys, yeah. play, play. I mean, the, the, the audience, too, they were, like, craving DPS, booing goats, you know, all, right, all right, stage. Right. So I think finally they're like, okay, well, teams don't want to be booed on stage all the time. And maybe, you know, the teams that are done uh, or prepping for stage two, going out of the goats meta into the DPS meta, yeah. are probably saying, you know, might as well brush off the rust now before mm. uh, it's a little too late. Well, one team that's uh, obviously uh, skilled at avoiding the booze, getting lots of cheers. Uh, the most bits in the league so far, Atlanta Rain, mm -hmm. uh, taking it to Houston Outlaws, 3-1 to one in their series, which yeah. was uh, a Should pretty have been big a win for them. Should have been a 4-0, but Muma hit like a, a really big shatter on King's Row. Right, it was a six-man shatter? Yeah, six-man shatter down to the wire. Like They, they just had their transforce, and then DeFran had grab, and yeah. Muma absolutely clutched it, absolute madman. And I know uh, Sword probably has a lot to say about Atlanta, because he's pretty well, close with, with them. <sighs> and uh, their management. That's what I wanted yeah. to hear, because Ron's been talking Atlanta at me all week here. So. I love Atlanta. How do you not love Atlanta? <laughs> what are you so saying, good. Sword? Atlanta is so such a great organization, not just the players there, right? I worked with uh, a few of the players, uh, Enlayer and Dogman, both great players, you know, really uh, mechanically gifted players and not just mechanically gifted. They bring a lot of hype. Like, you saw Dogman. Dogman's not... He's so willing to start kind of trash talking and get his team hyped. It kind of reminds me of what COD and what normal FPS shooters used to be, where you kind of rally up the crowd and get them hyped up, like, yeah, yeah, like, this team's shit, like, Cruz is a feeder, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But um, the coaching staff is also really good here. I have nothing but high praise for the Atlanta coaching staff. Sefi is such a great leader in Silence, uh, working with Silence as well. Silence is such a great kind of strategic coach in the sense of he's able to explain how a composition should work within a theoretical but also an adaptative state which is mm. really impressive and bring in the analytics with that as well and player development by Kasaurus I really do feel like they have a nice kind of formula to create a successful team not just within the players but within the coaching staff as well. Well, I actually wanted to ask you both about uh, trash talk and coaching, both of you being coaches. Right. What are your stances with your team when it comes to trash talking? Because it's obviously an element of all sports, yeah. you know, trying to get in the head of your opponent and right, mess right. with them. You know, if you've ever solo queued for Overwatch, you'll find yourself listening to all kinds of yeah, toxic, horrible trash talk. Yeah. But then there's like appropriate trash talk. So what are your approaches with your teams when it comes to that subject? Uh, I, I try not to force it. I think if, um, you know, it's in the player's personality, if it's like, a, if it's like for Dogman, like
like it's he, he mentioned on stage is more of a personal thing. Yeah. He he feels like he's more uh, he performs better if he's invested in the game. There's like some sort of personal attachment or connection yeah. with his enemies. You could put a, a I think a face in a name, um, and then maybe even a personal uh, narrative with him. Then it's appropriate. And it's good for him. It's good for the team, and it's genuine. It's authentic. Right. Um, I wouldn't ever force a player to do it for views or oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But and you're I not think going to reprimand them if it's done well. No. I mean, I think there's a time and a place, and most of the time, um, yeah. it's appropriate as long as you're not using like slurs or yeah. any derogatory terms or whatever like that. Yeah. If it's um, in-game trash talking. Yeah, that's you know, totally that's totally appropriate. people feeders and such. Is that your your perspective as well, sort of? Do you have a different yeah. approach? Yeah. Honestly, no. I, I agree with Ron. Like, it's, it's he very encourages much teabagging though. Oh. I've talked to him. Of course. He's like, yeah, he's like, I want like, them you gotta, to do. You gotta yeah. have the nice little banner in there. If you don't have the banter, why are you even playing a competitive game? I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Right? But realistically speaking, as Ron said, like it shouldn't be forced, right? You shouldn't be doing it for views or anything. If anything, I feel like it's a strong tool to utilize in terms of team momentum and kind of just getting the mindset right in the correct way. Yeah. But it's also a coach's job if a trash talk is happening like in the middle of a scrim or a match or anything along those lines, right? You have to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. I think that's the most important. Thing Thing about yeah. it sometimes players will let that get out of hand and you know they'll think so poorly about the enemy team for example that they kind of let their guard down and from there they let simple mistakes happen mm. which is the only thing you got to worry about when you're doing this trash talk kind of stuff but overall i think it's a great kind of uh momentum thing that can help a team really finish off and you know secure the deal on a lot of wins yeah. Well, uh, one team that finally secured a win, Washington Justice versus Florida. It was a clown fiesta of a yeah. match for sure, the back and yeah. forth. Uh, but Edo finally take, picking up his first win yeah, in really Overwatch like League. Him. Like After... we saw him, like, he, he, he didn't cry, but he's pretty close. Yeah. You know, we saw his teammates, how happy they were for him, kind of like shaking him, like, hey, congratulations. I think know? in his post-game interview, he said, I was planning on crying if we lost. Planning on crying. <laughs> he's like, all right, well, if I do win here, I got to get ready. got to get the theatrics going. <laughs> but it was like 83 losses before this big win. Um, are Washington Justice now going, are they, do they have a shot at getting better? Well, they did. they did that big announcement last night. I'm sure you saw it, Sword. Uh, Arc. From yep. the New York, you know, making that uh, transfer over, mm. um, but notes to him or not. Um, but yeah, early rumors at the beginning of the league said that uh, Ark was probably going to make that trade, and may it be budget concerns or what have you, um, things didn't pan out. But it looks like he's made the switch now, mm. um, and you know, coming off of at least their their first win, maybe that tiny bit of momentum is something that they need, and, and a new shot caller, whatever, could uh, probably help. Um, having worked with or he's having worked with um, Wizard Young and uh, Giannis before. Um, they're kind of looking like New York XS, you know, extra small. Maybe they're not, um, you know, large New in charge. New York Light. Yeah, New, New York, York Light. Light. XL 2.5 uh, XL <laughs> or whatever. Like, they, um, I, jokes aside, like, they, they will look better with this. But yeah. the question for me is how much? Uh, Sword, do you think they'll be a lot better, only a little bit better? How, how much of a change does this really matter for you? Uh, it's like a really hard thing to talk about Washington, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of beef going on about Wizard, right? About how he started off a team and he if it seemed like he wanted to prove I can coach players that I feel are not maybe the best players yeah, in the world. The money but ball approach, right? Are mediocre in a sense, right? Yeah, like the money ball approach in a sense where it's like I can coach these players up and then show people how good of a coach I am. My only fear with it is with so far from what we've seen, in my opinion, this meta, and I'm sure you would agree with me, Ron, is this meta is the easiest way to kind of coach players. And it's very team oriented, right? It's not like the other metas where it's like, okay, it's, uh, you know, mechanical pop off. Somebody might pop off and get like five with a dragon blade or something like that, right? It's very much team oriented. This composition. The GOAT's composition is very much each piece is equal uh, weight in a sense. Yeah. And if one person flips up, then everything kind of goes downhill from there, right? Um, so in my opinion, the ARC pickup is a really good one. It allows for a lot more decisive decision making. And I think a lot more, I think that's something that Washington really struggled with is being decisive. It seemed like they were really hesitant with regard to how to approach the game. They didn't really make the most uh, decisive decisions all the time. You saw Janice go in by himself a lot of the time. Um, so I think it will help a lot, but I don't think it will solve their core issues, which is how the team as a whole kind of move and the decision makings that each of them use independently. Well, a team that needs no help or lineup changes, Vancouver uh, bumping New York XL from the number one spot. Uh, bumper uh, yeah. leaving the charge there. Nice one. Very smooth. Very subtle. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, like Vancouver, we saw them whip out like Genji last night. You know, we yeah. can see that 
amazing at 3-3 or goats, but um, you know, Runaway has traditionally always been really good at playing other things as well. So yeah, going going seven and zero right now with I think they're actually first seed with a better map differential than New York. So yep. uh, tell Very us what you think slightly. about Vancouver, Sword. I think Vancouver is probably the best team that we've ever seen in Overwatch history, Ooh, in all that's honesty. A hot take. Um, actually, it's really funny because I'm doing that based off of Sideshow. I'm taking Sideshow credit for Sideshow stuff. He has like a Reddit clip where it's like, they're the best team ever. And like, honestly, they are though. They have such great synergy between each other, right? This is a team that's been together for a whole year. And these are veterans that have been around the scene forever, right? Since the beginning of really premier Overwatch, right? All these people have played pretty much in Overwatch uh, Contenders Apex over in Korea, right? You have Stitch, you have Slime, you have Raffle, you have Bumper, you have Hacksaw, right? You have Hureg, Hureg who was also on the London Spitfire, right? And they're guided by some really good coaches as well, right? You have a Bond, Young One, who is their coach on Runaway. You have Parsha, who brings in more owl experience from San Francisco Shock as their analyst, right? And so overall, I really do feel like this team is the core for success, not just because they're great mechanically gifted players, but because of the synergy and the experience that it comes in from being on a team together for a year and having that experience straight from the beginning of Overwatch's real epiphany within competitive Overwatch. So are you calling it right now? This is going to be a complete dominant season for them. You know, just wins consecutively, no losses, going right to the end? I don't know about that one. I think New York will give them a run for their money for sure because you can never count out New York, right? New York, if you look at last split, they were a very consistent team. They won multiple splits. Just when it came to playoffs, right, uh, for the finals, they kind of just fell apart. It seemed like they weren't the team that everybody knew. It seemed like they were struggling a lot with GOATs. Maybe there was, uh, back then, it was a really big clash of philosophies, apparently, between... Pavon and Wizard on how do we approach goats? Like, can we actually counter goats and not play goats, right? Um, and it was also not just goats, but like the Arista compositions and such as well, too, right? With Double Sniper. So the problem comes, can can uh, New York kind of keep up their form? And I think if New York can keep up their form, it's actually a 50-50, in my opinion. It's really about, can the challenger uh, take down this veteran of a champion, or is the challenge you're gonna crumble and fall in a very long and pressured series. So you're backpedaling. Like you're saying, yeah, oh, I was gonna say, best, but, you can know. we roll back yeah. about like two minutes okay. ago? Yeah, the right, best, but now it's 50 50. 50. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, that's, I think we should move they, on they, a little bit um, yes. onto Chengdu. You yes. know, Vancouver and New York, awesome teams. It's gonna be really close. It's like there's the, the Premier League in Overwatch, right. New York versus uh, Vancouver, and yeah. then there's everyone else fighting for who could potentially be the leader yeah, of that like we'll, pack. We'll, we'll bite at their ankles until we're ready. Yeah, yeah. is it going to be San Francisco, or is it Chengdu moving into Stage 2 after this playoff round? Uh, both have huge uh, players, of you know, DPS players. They're really good. Yeah. Um, I think Shock has been praised across the board for, you know, having a ton of DPS are all highly skilled across the board. Um, I think Chengdu uh, looks really good on DPS now, especially Jinmu on his Farah. He's uh, stood out a lot alongside Amang and kind of uh, capitalizing on chaos. Mm. But it's hard to compare, I think, just how good their DPS are because we haven't had a DPS-centric meta. You're just comparing yeah. how much they can slaughter immobile targets. Um, Sword, in your opinion, who do you think has the scariest DPS lineup in all the league? You can't you can't pull out shock of that yet, right? Like yeah. you have Architect, you have Sinatra, right? Baby Bay down in the wing too, right? Nevix could also flex technically to DPS even though he is known as the off tank as well. They they have a lot of strong players on that team, so I I would give the edge to Shock. But with that being said, I respect Ryu very highly as a coach as well. Going against him in World Cup, uh, when it was China versus Team Canada, I definitely underestimated Canada or China. And China did it incredibly well. Ryu knows what he needs to do for each individual player, and we see it, right? Sometimes Chang do just pull out like amazing plays out of their back pocket, and their DPS players, like you said, though they're hitting mobile targets, right? It's still they're still making some pretty nice plays against goats. It's still really hard to make DPS work against goats. Um, so I think that Chang Du can surprise a lot of people, especially if they get. Uh, I believe it was their other tank, uh, I can't say his name, I'm so GQ sorry. GQ Ren, GQ Ren. GQ Ren, there you go. I think if they get GQ Ren, that might change up stuff a little bit more because apparently Among is known more for just playing Hammond and not really anything else. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see what will happen if when he comes over. Uh, but for now, I'd give it to Shock just because they're more experienced, they're more veteran. Uh, and they just have, Shock has looked like a dominant team for a long period of time, not just this season, but last season as well towards the end when Coach Trusty was there to kind of lead them. Yeah, I think most people would agree that Shock is looking pretty scary coming into uh, Stage 2. 
Well, let's talk uh, playoffs for a second. We're in a bit of a precarious situation here as today there's a coin flip oh, yeah. right between uh, Toronto and uh, Philly to find out where they're sitting and who they're going up against. And neither of those teams probably want to win the coin flip That's either. That's exactly why they decided to do it with a coin flip. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we'll they agree be because... to lose the match. Right. So the loser who wins the coin flip. <laughs> are the winners at the end of the day. Yeah. Losers win, <laughs> yes. winners lose. Yeah. Yeah. It's Overwatch League! <laughs> I'm getting nightmares of coin flip from like season one and two. That was pretty, that was so scary. Ultimately to you both, what are the other teams? It's obviously New York versus Vancouver for this, this playoff round. Yeah. So what are the other teams hoping to accomplish here in this? Is it about getting, um, you know, that coveted third place now? Or is this just an opportunity to give your players some, you know, action on the playoff stage. So I'm going to dodge the question. Cool. And I'm going to say, you know, it's not unanimous. Uh, you know, it's not definite that uh, Vancouver are going to end up playing New York. Um, there's a there's a spot in my heart as a defiant fan uh, <laughs> that you know they will be uh -huh. uh, partaking in that final. Is this upside down? I can't tell. But regardless, um, you know, I I I'm going to totally go with my heart here for once and say. Toronto are going to make it to the final. I don't okay. care what anyone says. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say, Sword. Hey, I'm, I'm um, with you. Gonna... I'd love to see that. Yeah. I, just, I want all Canadian looking final. Looking at this league the way that it is. Don't don't tell me the odds. Being rational. You can keep your stats. <laughs> I prefer the magic. Okay, Sword. <laughs> um, how about you? Like, what what? Uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, what are you thinking? The playoffs? So for me, like, of course, I have full faith in Toronto. I have faith in Coach Bishop. I have faith in what he's put together. You know, a lot of people underestimated Define, and he's shown that with really unsought talent within Korea in the O2 kind of area in the team, he was able to create such a great team from rookies and veterans alike. And honestly, going back to your question, because I'm not going to dodge your question, AJ, is I really do feel like these expansion teams already have proven what they need to approve, right? A lot of the time going in just before the stage started, everyone was saying, oh man, the expansion team's gotta catch up. They will be hopeful if they make it into playoffs. But look at them. We have yeah. three expansion teams in the playoffs and they are they all look very strong. So for me, if I'm an expansion team, it's really good. You have proven that you can contend with the top guys, just stay there. And as for the other ones, I honestly feel like Boston, uh, Soul and Shock have a lot to prove. They need to prove that they can still make it towards the top. They can still have competitive games against, you know, Philadelphia Fusion, these ex new expansion teams coming in, Vancouver, Defiant, and Rain, and also still contend against New York, right? New York's still a juggernaut. They still have to prove that they can go up against that. And right now, I don't know if a lot of those teams can. I don't think really almost any team can go against New York and Vancouver right now. They're Except just for at Toronto. a completely different level. Except for Toronto. Except for Toronto. 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 The magic, the magic you know? But right. it's really hard. It's a lot to prove. We are uh, starting to run out of time, but we do have a couple of questions for you from Twitter before we let you go, Sword. This first one is from Ron Lee, who wants to know, who do you think is the most underrated in the Overwatch League? Which player is the most underrated in the Overwatch League? And which player do you think is the most overrated? Hmm. That is a really tough question, actually, to really think. I've been thinking about this since, like, yesterday when I saw it. But I think, honestly, the most overrated player and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, is Bumper, actually. I think Bumper is one of the most overrated players within the Overwatch League. And it's only because his style, if you took that style out into any other team, yeah, he would I don't think it would work. He would just feed all the time. And everyone that's like, oh, Bumper's insane. Bumper's a god. Like, I, I like think about it. And I'm like, no, no, he's not. It's just his team supports him so well. It's just that group's been together so long. I they feel like work. he... he plays that way partially because he understands that the team can support him that way. I, I think he's smarter than to just run run in, shield down, hammer up with anybody. Mm. Um, but I, could, I can see that point. I can see that argument as well. I, I'm curious to see, maybe in an alternate universe on some other team, he would be looking a lot less hot right now. And we do have one more question for you. This is from X Classic Ninja. Wants to know, why play a dying game like Overwatch when you could play a real game like Rocket League, Trollface? Ooh, uh, that's a really hard one. Um, <laughs> I think the big reason why is because I like to shoot things. I don't like to pass soccer balls into nets, you know, right. and mechanical cars. So I think you got to step up your game if you're like, going to that kind of Did Brody send in this question? Game. I was wondering if it was. Yeah, it was I mean, Brody. think about it. We're in the future, right? It's a sci-fi setting, like cars and wheels. We have hovercraft, we have you cyborg ninjas. You got, you got Lucio Ball on, on Overwatch bump, nah. if you want to do some Step rocket leaking. All right, Sword, we got to let you go, but it has been an absolute pleasure having you on Esports in 30. Best of luck as you chase that contender's crown, my friend. 
Thank you very much. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Well, all right, Ron, we got five minutes left, and that should be just enough time to talk all about Baptiste, the new player, dropping today in Overwatch, obviously unavailable to the uh, teams heading into playoffs yeah. this week, but will be around for the second stage of the second season of Overwatch yeah. League. Uh, I'm a support main myself. Me too. Yeah, We have that in common. Yes. Look at this. We're both supportive kind of guys. Yeah. That's why people like us. Well, <laughs> mo most, no one at the studio. <laughs> Just put those guys in the couch, that way we don't have to talk to them. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on this character? You've actually played him on the PTR. Yeah. I have not yet. I'm typically like, wait until it's live and sure. they've worked out all the bugs. What are your reactions to the character so far? Um, I'm having a lot of fun. So I think unlike uh, you, you, I think you play more Lucio, more I'm Moira. A Lucio, Moira, secondary than yeah. Zen. Yeah. So nice I play a lot of, of I play a lot of Zen. I play yeah. a lot of Ana. Um, you know, I like I like shooting things. Yeah. Um, so Baptista is right up my alley. Uh, I think his name is Jean Jean Baptiste, mm. something like that. He's from uh, the Caribbean, uh, maybe like Haiti or something. He has that French accent. Um, yeah. No one cares about his backstory. What are his I abilities can't. and he, how will it affect him? Okay, that, Ron? listen. So he can shoot. He can shoot things. Which <laughs> yeah, is nice. He has a burst gun. When they announced they're doing a new support, I was like, what we need in the current state of things is a support character who's got a hit fire. Yeah, gun, I mean they're they're meta defining yeah. typically. So we've had a stale meta for for like forever yeah. now. Um, it was due time. We got some some fresh faces in the game. Yeah. And um, I think he is very unique. I don't know um, if this is necessarily better or worse moving into the future because mm. uh, on one hand i'm sick of seeing tanks and supports every game yeah um i do think the other changes on ptr help eliminate that that going forward but he seems oppressive in his own ways mainly because of his uh immortality drone right which for those of you that uh, don't understand or uh, aren't on ptr uh he can set down this drone that sits kind of above your team and deploys this uh area that prevents you from dying so it's um, kind of like winston's bubble except yeah I you, you'll take the damage, but you won't go below um, like your last 10% or something. Oh, that's how it works. So yeah. you can, okay, but then the second that the invulnerability shield is gone, then can't you wipe with all the damage that has yes, been done? Yes, but it lasts quite a while. I think it lasts like almost like 10 seconds or something. Right. Um, so the counterplay is that you can actually shoot down the drone. It has yeah. 250 HP. So once it goes, once you shoot it down, it's gone. You can proceed with the, the murder and the massacre. So it's basically like, here's a May who has yeah, it's like a protective May Blizzard, I guess is how you can look at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot smaller, obviously, yeah. but that's an incredibly strong ability. And in a shooter, um, it's God mode. You it's... have God mode on a basic ability. It's not an ultimate, right. which we haven't even got to yet, but that's absolutely insane as well. What's his ultimate, then? Um, he sets up a uh, square. It's a, it's a amplification right, matrix. Right, the amplification yeah. barrier, so except not a barrier. That, that matrix, yeah. for those of you that do not know, uh, any projectiles that do damage that go through it will be doubled, and there's also no cap to how much it stacks with other amplification abilities. So if Zenyatta puts Discord on a target and you nano boost, let's say, a McCree, and then he uses his ultimate through the amp matrix, that will do like a thousand yeah, it's to kill the entire team. Oh my goodness. Um, but not only does it double damage, it also doubles healing, which means right. you could use it to top off your team, which is really nice. It's a nice bonus. It's high noon twice. Oh, that's that's good. Yeah, thanks. Wow, Thank you'd be you. a great understudy for uh, Matt Mercer. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So is there a chance that this could potentially like flip the meta entirely where we go back to single healer and it's Baptiste and teams just play around him? Or are we at best just going to avoid goats and go back to our standard two 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 lineup? So from what I've seen in my practices and experimenting and stuff like that, he does seem very strong um, in a GOATS team. Yeah. But the problem is, uh, sure, he's strong in GOATS, but he's stronger in other things. So even though, yeah, like uh, a couple of pros are worried that, well, now we just switch out Brig, which was one problematic hero for another. Yeah. Um, but they nerfed Lucio, which made GOATS a lot weaker. Yeah. And Baptiste works a lot better when he can bunker down and kind of stay in a unified group with, the, with his team that could you know, spam things like Junkrat or Bastion or Risa. Right. Um, he synergizes really well with those characters. And I don't know, if, if Bastion starts becoming meta, is that? We did see him in competitive play this yeah. week. I mean, is that good up. though? Do we want Bastion to be meta-defining? We know what happens when Bastion had that, that small buff a while back, that, yeah. that ironclad buff. Oh. That needed to be hotfix. That's the only time Overwatch has ever had a hotfix because it was so yeah, broken. I have so. never been as upset with a game for a change yeah. than that moment when I went up to a Bastion with Reaper and like put four shots Infinite at point-blank like, range. It was yeah. like he didn't die. No, like, it was like the Terminator. It was, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. The Omnic Crisis, like Second World War, whatever levels of terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, final topic for us, Ron, before we sign off. Who was your player of the week at the conclusion of this uh, first stage? So last week we went to Aimeng. 
for yeah. um, kind of amazing ball play, and amazing ball amazing play, ability to rise to allowing the DPS to play. Yeah. Right. Um, this week we're going to do the opposite, which is we're going to praise a player for enabling amazing goats play. This kind of uh -huh. ties into what Swart said before. So he says, you know, Bumper and any other team would look really bad because he doesn't get that sort of support. So we're going to honor those supports today, namely mm. one in particular, and Twilight on the Vancouver Titans, yeah. who, uh, you know, a lot of people last season were saying, Jonak, MVP of the season, best in that we've ever seen. Right. No one could top him this season. Uh, we, That's because Runaway weren't in the league. Yeah, exactly. So now they came in, and you have Twilight here, who, you know, some people were like, yeah, he's good, but is he better than Jonak? A couple of casters say so. A couple people were saying, well, no, you have Shu on the Guangzhou charge, who, mm. you know, great flex support in his own right, good Ana, good Zen, contention for Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Twilight made him look like yeah. he, he manhandled him in, right, in that right. series, right? The 4-0. Um, sure, it, we're not... We can't just evaluate individuals because on a, on a team level, yeah. but at least comparing these teams, Twilight yeah. looked like he had a huge, huge emphasis on the win, massive damage on Zen. Yeah. Uh, I think you brought, brought up some I, sort of stat. I, unless I'm misquoting, I could have swore I saw it yeah. saying something like uh, 19k healing and then like 14 or 15k damage. Which, which is, is absolutely absurd. For a Zen, it's bonkers. Yeah, I mean, this guy's probably out damaging his Ryan, who's like, yeah. on, on, at least on some maps, which is the, well, the kind of uh, the crux of the GOAT's composition. So yeah. uh, props to Twilight keeping his uh, tanks up, keeping his whole team up with his transes, mm. enabling that aggressive play style, uh, minimizing deaths, doing pretty much everything. Like, what yeah. more could you want from a support player? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to kill the whole team. He's going to keep your team up. He's going to style on the enemy. What more do you want? You ready for this amazing transition? You okay. ready for this? I'm ready. Well, it's the twilight of our show now, as it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> that That's was, all the time that was bad. Watch today. Thank you to Sword, thank you to Rod, and thank you out there for watching. Don't forget that we will be back here next week for more Overwatch coverage, especially with the playoffs happening. And tomorrow, tune in same time, same place for another Esports in 30, all about fighting games as we welcome James Chen to talk about the final round.